So what I would like you to know, there is an armor that you have to be fully dressed with as, as a child of God. Let's go. 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Now, here is your first piece of armor. So because the Bible is saying you have to have your loins got about with truth. In other words, what is truth? Praise the Lord. It is good to be with you today in Shekinah. I hope you had a very blessed week. And um, we're just going to come in agreement right now for the program. We are going to do um, a series on spiritual warfare, like I said last Sunday. And um, what we're going to do, we're going to go now to part two. The, this can have um, quite a long play out, but however the spirit would lead me. Spiritual warfare, I must tell you, is very, very necessary. And unless we learn how to wage war, we cannot walk in victory. We will always walk in defeat if we do not know how to wage war. Now, you say, well, Jesus defeated the devil 2,000 years ago. Yes, we know that. But there are many, many times God's children do not know the know-how. The know-how, when I mean, when I say the know-how, I would mean that, what I mean is that the children of God do not understand that the work is finished 2,000 years ago and they must take the victory and walk in it, walk in it because it's already done. Um, Jesus conquered all on the cross. But they, they, don't, they don't do that. So what I would like to say is, spiritual warfare is needed, and we have to come to that place whereby we understand that the devil is already defeated. All right? And we have to take the victory and walk in it. Now, if there was no need for spiritual warfare, then God would not give us an armor if there was no need. When in the natural, when, you know, when the soldiers are going to uh, battle in the battlefield, they don't go uh, anyhow. They don't go with natural clothes or naturally dressed. Um, they have to make sure that they are well armed. All truth is parallel. And if the natural soldier, when they go into battle and they go unarmed, they will come out dead. They will come out defeated. Because the enemy will have his way with them. So they have to make sure before they go on the battlefield, they have on their whole armor. They have on a helmet. They have their gun. They have the proper boots. They have their belt. You name it. And the way they dress, we as children of God are called soldiers. All right? We are called soldiers in scripture. We are called sheep. We are called soldiers, we are called, you know, God's children, we are called saints, 
All right. Let's go with the, with the soldier name, okay? Let's take the soldier. Now, the spiritual, the, the Christian, if you're going to march into this, this, this war, if you're going to go into this war, meaning your Christian walk, every day the devil attacks. Every day Satan comes with something and you have to make sure that you have your spiritual armor on. We have our spiritual armor. The natural soldier have to be, um, he have to be fully armored. You know, they have to have their garb. They, they have to be fully, fully armored. We are spiritual soldiers. We also have a spiritual armor. So what I would like to do as we pray, you know, before we pray, get your pens, your highlighters, whatever, your notebooks. And it will be very good if you can um, take notes because um, you will learn these scriptures. You will know what they're all about, especially when you highlight them and then we expound on the word. You will know the know-how. Praise the Lord. So we're going to read now, right now, from Ephesians. We will go to Ephesians chapter 5. So before we go now, we're going to pray. So you find Ephesians 5. Sorry, Ephesians chapter 6. Sorry. Ephesians chapter 6. And you're going to know about your armor there, your spiritual armor. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, today we give you praise and we give you thanks. As we continue, dear God, in Jesus' mighty name on spiritual warfare, I'm asking you, dear God, that you will quicken your children today. Quicken them in a very, very special way. We ask God in Jesus' mighty name, as the word of God go forth, it will not return void, but it will accomplish that which you purpose it for. The devil is a liar, and today we bind up principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and wickednesses in high places. In Jesus' mighty name, Satan, you have lied to God's children for many, many years. You have lied to them, and you have said to them many times that they cannot walk in victory, that they are losers. We are not losers. We are winners. We are God's children, and we are winners. And right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, on the authority of God's holy word, uh, you lose every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl that is listening to this program right now. We pray, God, that you will quicken this word to your children. We pray that you will open their spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, because we cannot hear the word of God, we cannot hear with our natural ears. We cannot receive spiritual mighty God teaching and we cannot receive spiritual things with natural, through natural senses. It's not going to work. So open your children's spiritual ears. Open their spiritual understanding. And Lord, you quicken them by your spirit. And as the word of God go forth, let it go forth mixed with faith. And Lord, help your children to believe. Help their, un help, help their unbelief and help them to believe. And Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks that you will anoint your children with a mighty special anointing. Mighty God, for this whole series. And in Jesus' mighty name, we say thank you and we praise you. Because Lord... We are not losers. We are winners. Once you did your work on the cross 2,000 years ago, from that very minute, we are winners. All who come to know Jesus, we are winners. As Christians, we are winners. The ungodly, they are losers because they don't have God. The ungodly cannot win anything because they don't have God. And without God, there are no hope. There is no hope. Without God, in Jesus' mighty name, all we do is, without God, we operate in the flesh. But with God, mighty God, we operate by the Spirit. Because it's not by might, nor by power, 
but it's by your spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And today, God, we give you praise and we give you thanks and we ask your blessings now on each and every one. Mighty God, all those who have tuned in, if they have unsaved loved ones, we're asking for salvation for their house. We're asking salvation for their families. And mighty God, we give you praise and we give you thanks as we pray the blessing of the Lord upon each and every one. I pray that you will anoint me another time. Without your Holy Spirit, all I'm standing here is making a bunch of noise. But with, with the Holy Spirit, mighty God, the word of God is preached. Mighty God, with the anointing. My God, my God, in Jesus' name. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit, because without the Holy Spirit, I cannot do it. Mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, I give you praise for divine unction now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'm reading now from chapter 6. Remember, this is the second part of spiritual warfare. The second part of spiritual warfare. So, I'm reading from Ephesians 6, and we will go from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, the word of God is saying here that we have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Without the Holy Spirit, you don't have power because we need the Holy Spirit to empower us as Christians to walk the walk, live the life, and talk the talk. As Christians, we have to be empowered through the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And we have to be strong. We have to be strong in the Lord. One can only be strong by constant faith in the cross. The cross is the object of our faith. Always remember that. And in the power of his might, this power is at our disposal. The source is the Holy Spirit. But the means is the cross. The power comes from the Holy Spirit. But the means is the cross. If there was no death on the cross, then, of course, we don't have the means in Jesus' name. So you have to be strong. 11, put on the whole armor of God. This is not some of the spiritual armor. As children of God, we have a spiritual armor. And this spiritual armor that we have, we have to make sure that we're fully dressed with this armor. It's a spiritual armor. You can't see it with your eyes. All right? You can't see it with the natural eyes. When the natural soldier goes into battle, he has, he has to be fully, fully armored. All right? He has on his helmet, he has a gun, he has his belt, he has his, you know, he has a vest on to protect you know, his heart from, from bullets, and he has his shoes, and he has everything. He's fully dressed. The, the spiritual, the Christian now, we have a spiritual armor. The Bible says put on the whole armor of God. Not some, all. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, we know that there's a real devil to fight, all right? There's a real devil to fight. And you say, well, Jesus won the war. What is there to fight? Trust me, there's a war by the minute, by the second. There's a spiritual war that's going on. And in Jesus' mighty name, 
there is a real devil to fight. So you have, you have Jesus and you have a devil that is real. The children of God who are serving the Lord Jesus, we have the victory to, through him. We can win every war every time. You can walk in 100% victory all the time. Not 98%, but 100%. Praise God. So let's go to verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now, flesh and blood, we don't, you know, our warfare is not with each other. All right? We as human beings, our warfare is not with each other. Your children give you a hard time. You don't war with your children. You don't compromise either. You lay down your rules. You set your rules. You have to discipline them. You have to make sure you do your best as a parent. All right? And when it comes to a godly home, praise the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, Christians cannot war with each other. Your, your children is not the problem. It's the devil that is in them. It's the devil that uses them. It's not the kids. It's the devil. Praise the Lord. But never mind as parents, you can't just sit back, you know, and cuss them out and call them devils and, and, and you know, some parents are so mean, though they are Christians, they will, say to their, they will say to their children things like this. You, you just like the devil himself. No, 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 don't call your children devils. They are not devils, all right? They are kids, and many times they are grown kids, but they do not understand because why? Many of them, they were, they were brought up in the church, but they are backslidden, right? They don't serve God any, anymore. And many times as parents, as Christian parents, you feel to cuss them out. You can't cuss them out. You have to pray. You have to make sure you do spiritual warfare, and do not compromise your standards. If once, you, once you lay down the rules, you show them what is right and what is wrong from the scripture, and you lay down your, the rules, whether they obey them or not, that's them and God. Listen what Ezekiel says. Ezekiel teaches us to warn them. Ezekiel says, if we don't warn them, their blood will be on us. Praise the Lord. So we have to, we have to tell them. If you refrain from telling them, their blood is on you. And that is serious. You have to have discipline and you have to tell them. All right? Now, the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God, not just some of it, but all that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You can conquer this devil because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. So if you have rebellious children, you must understand that it's the devil. You have to conquer the wiles of the devil that is using your children. Praise the Lord. You have to conquer the wiles of the devil that is using your adulterous husband. You have to conquer the wiles of the devil that is using your adulterous wife. You have to conquer the wiles of the devil all the time, but you don't, you don't fight. You don't fight with no one. You don't fight with your adulterous spouse because it's the devil that's using them. So, well, then, Pastor Jean, what do I do? You have to do spiritual warfare and win the war on your face. You have to win the war on your knees. You have to win the war in, in prayer, all right, in, in deep intercession. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, so you don't fight with each other. 
praise God. Satan constantly uses our family, our, our human beings to carry out his dirty work. All right? Your enemy is not your in-laws. Your enemy is the devil. Many times we don't like the in-laws them. But your enemy is not your in-laws. Your enemy is Satan. But, and the Bible says, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, again, like I said, your warfare is not with human beings. Your warfare is with the devil. Now, how are you going to wage war? Praise God. Against principalities and against powers. Now, rulers, you know, the, all of Satan, angels, they're, they're evil, right? Evil angels. And trust me, Satan has an army and all of them have their job. You have from the highest rank to the least. All right? And trust me, they are on the job to kill, steal, and destroy. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. Satan's kingdom has order. You say, well, Pastor Jean, that's giving glory to Satan. No, I hate the devil. I hate the devil with cruel hatred because he is destroying a lot of our young people. He's destroying marriages. He's destroying people's lives. Look at, look at the state of Ukraine, you know, um, the devil is a liar. There's war and, and there's so much confusion, you know, with leaders all over the world. You know, leaders doesn't even know what to do with their country anymore. Because why? They don't want God. They don't want God. They're doing it in flesh. They don't want nothing to do with God. So Satan is the one that has everything in chaos and confusion. So we're not wrestling against people. You're wrestling against the devil. Now, the Bible says against powers. What? In Jesus' name, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Trust me, this world and all its, its, its problems is the devil and his demons them at work. And spiritual wickedness is in high places. This refers to, you know, demon spirits. A lot of people don't believe in this. You have a lot of churches, you know, that are cold and dead. They don't even teach their congregation spiritual warfare. And it's in the word. All right? We cannot fight the devil. We cannot accomplish anything spiritually. We cannot accomplish victory spiritually by, with, by fighting with our five senses. You got to fight this devil, you, you know, with the Holy Spirit. You got to fight this devil by faith in Jesus' mighty name. It's not how you feel and how you want to pray, but you're, you're a little bit, you know, uh, you go in a corner. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for this night. Thank you. I had a good day, Lord. Thank you. When I drive, protect me. Good night. Bye. Excuse me. You ain't winning no war with that. Bless my children and keep them. Come on. And they're, they're strung out on dope. And, and many of them, they're gay. And may, many of them don't listen. And they're so rude and disrespectful. And that's the prayer you're going to pray. Why? You know, you don't know. You, don't, you, don't, you just don't have the tools. You don't have the know-how. You are not taught. Praise God. So this, 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 uh, this series is coming out. And you just take heed, and you will win the war every time. The devil is a liar. Just remember, you don't fight with people. No matter how people are wicked, no matter how people are, you know, they deal with you real ugly, don't fight with them. You forgive them, and you go on your knees and do the warfare. And you say, well, Pastor Jean, I don't even know where to start. 
Okay? Now, I'm going to give you an example. Let us say you have an enemy, right? You have an enemy that, that really, really is messing you up. Now, that enemy can be anything. It can be an in-law. It can be, um, I don't want to say a friend because your friend shouldn't be your enemy, right? If you have a real friend, they shouldn't be your enemy. But you have somebody that really gets on your nerves, right? You, you're really, really, uh, you don't know how to deal with this situation and, and it worries you and it stresses you out, all right? Because you have this, this, this enemy on your case. Okay, we're going to deal, let's say, with rebellious children or a, a spouse that is, if, that, is, that is wicked, like it, it's in adultery and a, a spouse may be dabbling with evil. And I'm talking about Christians, you know, Christians. These are Christians, praise God, children backslidden. You say, well, how am I going to deal with, with, you know, there is so much confusion in my home, Pastor Jean, and, you know, the, the enemy is really using my children. How am I going to deal with that? The enemy is really using my spouse. How am I going to deal with that? Okay, let us try a prayer for rebellious children and uh, any, and a spouse maybe that's in adultery. So let's go for it. Now, uh, let's say I'm doing warfare for, my, for rebellious children in my house. Now, I don't have that. I give God praise and thanks. All my children are saved and washed in the blood. So I, my kids are married and never mind, you know, um, one is divorced and, and so forth. And God is good. But I, I brought up my children in the ways of the Lord, so I don't know nothing about, you know, children sleeping out, children strung out on drugs, children fornication, children in fornication, you know, children are, are evil and wicked and they're rude and no, 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 I, I, I didn't have that. Why? I had discipline in my house, all right? I don't play church and they had to toe the line, praise God. So... And we, let's pretend now I have rebellious children. This is how you're going to pray for your rebellious children and your spouse that is wicked and evil, meaning they're in adultery, they don't live, they don't have no fruit spiritually to show any signs that they are living for God. No. All right? So we're going to go to it. Now we're going to start. And here is how you would do it. Father God, I come to you today, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. If there's any sin in my life, dear God, I pray that you will have mercy on me and forgive me and wash me clean in the blood of the Lamb. And mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, as I come to you, dear God, you see my rebellious children, you see my spouse that is living Dear God, for the devil, and I'm asking you, please. Mighty God, I pray and I call on the Holy Spirit to help me and to pray through me today. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, anoint me, dear God, with intercession now. I pray that the Spirit of God will anoint me to intercede for my rebellious family. The devil is a liar. Satan, I want you to know in the name of Jesus, on the authority of God, God's holy word, uh, a bind up principalities uh, and powers uh, and rulers of darkness and wickednesses in high places. Uh, you are going to lose my children. Uh, they are not going to serve you, Satan. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name, uh, I curse the spirit of rebellion. Uh, I curse the demon spirit uh, of disrespect. Uh, I curse uh, every demon spirit of immorality in my kids. Uh, I curse the disrespect uh, that they have for God, uh, that they have for the Holy Spirit, uh, that they have for Jesus. Uh, I curse uh, the work of the devil in them. Uh, mighty God, you see these children grew up in church uh, and you see they're backslidden. Uh, the devil 
devil is a liar. Satan, in the name of Jesus, right now I destroy your hold on my children and on my spouse because the blood of Jesus is against you. My God, in the name of Jesus, you said in your word, we must not commit adultery. You said in your word, in Jesus' mighty name, Father God, that the enemy is defeated from day one. You have won the war on the cross. You took the keys from Satan. And Lord, I believe with all my heart as I bind up this demon spirit of wickedness in my spouse. I pray God in Jesus' mighty name. My spouse will serve you. My spouse will have respect for the Holy Spirit. My spouse will have respect in Jesus' mighty name, and my spouse will live as an example, and in Jesus' mighty name, as a high priest of the home, my spouse, mighty God, I'm trusting you for deliverance, and Satan, whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatsoever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven, right now, a Bind you up uh, right now in my spouse, uh, the work you're doing in my spouse, uh, the work uh, you're doing in my children. Uh, I bind up all your wicked, evil spirits. Uh, I bind you up in Jesus' name uh, and I send you right back uh, to the pits of darkness uh, and I lose the power of God uh, to deliver my spouse. Uh, I lose the power of God uh, to deliver my children. Uh, I lose the power of God to deliver my house because you said in your word in Jesus mighty name as for me and my house we are going to serve God and Satan you cannot have my kids you cannot have my spouse in Jesus mighty name and Lord I look to you for their deliverance in Jesus name amen and amen now, what I would like to say, say now is that, that, uh, that prayer, it goes something like that. All right? It goes something like that. So what I would encourage you, if you're listening, right, to this program, you copy that. You play it all the time until you get it. Do you know how I learned to pray? I, there was a woman that started ministry with me. It, it was four or five of them. But this one woman, I used to admire how this woman interceded. And I begged God. I said, God, I know it's the Spirit have to teach me and help me. But Lord, if you give me quarter, not half, just quarter of the, the way this woman would intercede with her every, with every fiber in her being, just quarter, I'll be happy. And with the Holy Spirit, I'll be able to, to, do the, to, 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 to intercede the same way she does. I learned to pray that way because, you know, it's okay. The Spirit will help you, but you have to be willing to want it. And I wanted it so bad. The way this woman would pray, I said, God, please. I mean, she's in heaven right now, right? She passed away. But when I tell you a powerful woman of prayer, she can pray, boy. She can pray. And let me tell you, for me, spiritual things for me, all right? I would do anything under the sun, pay any price, Go to the extreme when it comes to the spiritual, when it comes to the things of the spirit. Trust me, I will go, I will do anything, but you keep all your money, you keep all your material stuff. I don't want none, but Spiritual things that comes from God, like peace and joy and strength and grace, uh, the anointing, the power, you know, the, the, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. Praise God. Those are the things that I am after. And that's why I pay such a dear price. And you will find 
this, se this series very, very interesting. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because it is my hobby. Praying is my hobby. Whether you believe it or not, that's your problem. But God knows. Praying is my hobby. I love to study the word because they go hand in hand. And you will find this series very interesting because I do not come to you with information. I come to you by solid experience. I have experience, solid experience, when it comes to um, spiritual warfare. And I can, I can tell you, you know, story after story after story after story after story where many, many wars have been won on my faith. You say, well, what do you mean? Many, many wars have been won through prayers, through intercession, through intense intercession. And I do not come here with information. I come to you with solid experience. It's the most beautiful life one can have. When you see you pay that price in prayer, and you know somebody is free from the powers of Satan. Somebody is free from the powers of darkness. You feel like you won um, one trillion dollars. Right? Because I love people. That's all I live for. I love people, and I love all kinds of people. Doesn't matter about your skin color. And I don't see people, I see souls. And I want you to be free from the power of Satan, that you can serve God and make heaven your home. That, those are the things that I live for. Praise God. You can accumulate your wealth and you can accumulate whatever you want. But everything that God has for me, I go after it because a man has nothing unless it comes from above. Praise the Lord. Now, so that is an example of spiritual warfare. But remember, <laughs> that's the tip of the iceberg. That's, that's really nothing. That's just an, a little example. But as we go along, you will hear more. Now, I would like you to... Now that we're finished with 12, let us go on to see what the armor is all about. All right? So God's children have a spiritual armor. Now, there are many, many people in the body of Christ that know how to do warfare. But here, here is what the problem is. We are not fully dressed with the whole armor. Maybe you have three pieces of armor, you know, in the right place. But the other pieces of armor, you don't have them in place because of sin. So you cannot wage war effectively when you have sin in your life. You can't win. So what you have to do, clean up your life and make sure that all the pieces of armor are in place. Now, all truth is parallel. Listen to this. If the spirit, if the natural soldier go into the battlefield with just his boots and his helmet. If he doesn't have a gun or he, if he doesn't have a breastplate as in to, you know, to really protect his heart and stuff, 
he will be dead on the battleground. He'll be dead on the battlefield. Because why? He didn't have a gun, so the enemy just killed him because he didn't have on that breastplate there, that, that, you know, that vest, whatever. He didn't have it on, and he didn't have a gun. So he is dead. The children of God, listen to me carefully, all truth is parallel, is the same way. Satan gave us blows after blows after blows because we go into warfare, into spiritual warfare, but there are some pieces of armor that are left out because of sin. Right? So, let's go for it. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, verse 13, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. The times that we're facing right now, this is an evil day we're living in. And because we're living in such an evil day, we have to make sure that our spiritual armor is on 24-7. You cannot afford to do it any other way because if one piece is out, you're going to get blows in that area. All right? So we have to be able to withstand the evil day. This is the evil day that we are living in, whether you know it or not. And if you're blind and you don't want to see it, that's too bad. If you want to play that, you know, if you want to, to be blind spiritually and to be blind physically, it's too bad. But we're living in an evil day. This is the most wicked day. This is the day that, that they, you know, the Bible talks about. The evil will become more evil and the righteous will become more righteous. This is that evil day. So, we have to make sure that we, we withstand in this evil day, meaning we have to resist and oppose the powers of Satan, the powers of darkness. And the Bible says, and having done all to stand. This refers to the, the believer, the Christians, of course, not giving ground, not a single inch. You can't give any ground to Satan. You can't have no opening in your life. Or is the devil going to beat you up? He knows your life. What Satan sees and hears, he knows. He is not omnipotent. He is not omnipresent. And he is not omnipotent, omnipo omnipotent, omnipresent, and nor omniscient. Sorry. I'll repeat that. Satan is not omniscient. He is not omnipotent. All right? There is no way he can know everything. What Satan sees is not omnipresent. He, what Satan sees is what he knows. All right? What he hears, how you pray and how you live, he knows because he sees those things. All right? Praise the Lord. So, you have to understand what he sees and knows about you is what he comes to you with every single day. And Satan has nothing new. The devil is a liar. So, we have to be dressed with the whole armor because we live in the most evil day. Can't get any more evil than this. And we have... Having done everything, you know, you do your part. You pray, you do your warfare. You stand strong. There's no opening in your life with sin, where sin is concerned. And you know that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. All right? We'll get that from James chapter 5. We don't have time to take you there now. So what I would like you to know, there is an armor 
that you have to be fully dressed with as, as a child of God. Let's go. 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Now, here is your first piece of armor. So because the Bible is saying you have to have your loins girt about with truth. In other words, what is truth? The truth of the cross. The truth of the finished work. Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus rose from the dead. And right now he is seated at the right hand of his father, making intercession for all of us. You have to believe that truth. You have to believe also in the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter. All right? And you can read about that in John chapter 14. The Holy Spirit. You have to believe in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's not three gods, but it's three in one. You can't separate them. There are three in one, but each one of them have their own office. You say, well, that's difficult to understand. And it's weird because it's confusing. It's not confusing. You have to have an open heart. And when you're praying, you go to God and say, Lord, I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. I want to know you for real. I pray, God, you will reveal the Godhead to me. I pray, God, you will make me aware and alert on this, in, in this evil world. I pray that you will help me to know you. Reveal yourself to me, Lord. God will do it. God is revealing himself today to Muslims. That's how they're getting saved. God is revealing himself today to Hindus. God is revealing himself today to the atheists. God is revealing himself in a very powerful way today. Right? To the ungodly. If you ask God sincerely, God, I have to know you. I have to understand the Trinity. Reveal to me everything that I need to know about you. The Lord will do it. But you got to go sincerely to him. You have to go sincerely. Because he's not a by-the-way God, you know, cheap and and, and you can do what you want and go to him. How you, no, 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 no. He's not a by-the-way God. He is God of the universe. This is the God that spoke the word. And the worlds were framed and formed. This is the God you're dealing with. All right? God is not like man. He's not corrupt. He's not foolish. He knows everything about us. He knows every grain of hair on your head. You can't count how much hair you have on your head. Yet the Bible says the Lord knows every grain of hair on your heads. This is the God we serve. He's all powerful. But you have to, the Bible says when you seek God, with your whole heart, then you will find him. You can't go to God any house, you know, slam down and, you know, uh -uh. no, no, no. The Lord knows you, every one of us, he knows inside out. And the Lord will know if you're real. So don't think you can fool him, you can't. And don't think that you can play around with God, you can't. You got to come real, and the Lord will help you. Trust me. If God helped me, you know, a sinner, when I tell you lost, lost, if God can help me, he will help you the same way and even better. God is good. Now listen what it says. It says here, stand therefore, Having your loins got about with truth. What is truth? 
this. People don't want the Bible. People don't want to take time to study the Word. They will read all their novels and they will read all their craziness. You name it, all their magazines. But this Bible, people don't want it. You know why? Because this is the living Word of God. This is truth. This is truth. And the Bible says you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So if the Bible is saying that the first piece of armor is to gird, gird your loins with truth. In other words, make sure that you know the truth. So truth is the first piece of armor. So let us go now to the second piece. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, we, our righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags. All right? But we have to put on the righteousness of Christ. So righteousness is your second piece of armor. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of Christ, which comes strictly through the cross. You can't have that righteousness no other way. That righteousness comes through the cross. Once you see you're a child of God, you're a true Christian, you are clothed with his righteousness. Praise the Lord. And you have to be willing to walk in his righteousness. You can't live righteous and holy and pure without Christ, without the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it. Trust me, that's in vain. Anything you try to do, right, as a man or a woman of God, and you're trying to do it in the flesh, it will crumble. You will crash. You've got to do it through Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God. It is such a privilege, and it's such an, an honor. It's the highest honor, at least, I can't speak for you, but for me, to know Jesus in, his, in the power of his resurrection, to know him and to walk in his righteousness, not your own righteousness, in his righteousness. It is such a pure life. It is a life that is so clean, when I tell you character, that life gives you character. And trust me, if you don't have character, you are nothing if you don't have character. As a Christian, you don't have character, you have nothing. But when you put on the righteousness of Christ, and you walk in that righteousness. Don't pollute it. Because don't think you can walk in his righteousness and go sell yourself cheap in like some cheap skate all over the place and pollute yourself with, with sin and wickedness. You know, you curse, you live in adultery, you fornicate, you tell lies, you do all kinds of stuff. No, 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 no. You can't walk in his righteousness like that. His righteousness is flawless. It's flawless. You say, well, we're a human being. We must make mistakes. Of course. I won't deny that. I'm not perfect. I'm far from it, but I'm striving. And I'm not going to be foolish enough to go and commit sin and, and come and repent and commit sin and repent and commit sin and repent and commit sin. You know, what do you take God for? Some cheap skate? 
No, no, no. You don't play games with God. He knows. He knows us inside out when we're real. Right? I'm not going to be foolish enough to do that. If the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, listen what it says. Be ye perfect even as Christ is perfect. So you can't, you can't just go, you know, commit sin and come back and repent. and No, no, no. Perfection doesn't come like that. We make mistakes, all of us. You repent and you come clean. You don't go back to the same stuff, the same garbage, the same junk, and, and Satan getting glory all the time. You keep making the same mistake over and over again. No, no, no. You are not saved. You need the cross. You need to be saved over and over again. You need water baptism in a fresh way. You need the Holy Ghost in a fresh way. No, you don't do that. And the reason why we do foolish things, we, done, we, we do not want to study this word. We don't want to study this word. Corinthians says, Paul says to the church at Corinth, he says, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a temple of Jesus. How can you defile the temple of God? You figure that one out. And yet we play church and we're the biggest hypocrites. That is why so many people don't want God. All right? I'm not saying it's a reason why, because everybody has to work out their own salvation in fear and trembling. That's why so many people don't want God, because church people are hypocrites. They're the biggest hypocrites in the face of this earth. Biggest hypocrites. Isn't that sad? That is so tragic. That's why so many people don't want God. They're saying, oh, look at how they behave. Why should I serve God? Why should I go to church? Okay, if you're one of those, listen to me carefully today. That's not an excuse. That's a lame excuse. You don't follow anybody. You follow this book and you follow Christ. You follow Jesus, not people. How people live in the church, they will have to answer to God. And if you're going to make heaven, you better stop making excuses that are not called for. Because you got to work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. Nobody can get saved. Nobody can do it for you. Stop blaming people in the church. And you get with the program and serve God for you. Let people answer for their own wickedness. You can't go to, you're going to go to hell because you see the church people doesn't live. Are you silly? No, 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 no. I don't care how church people live. I am not looking at nobody's life. I will serve God in order to make heaven. Excuse me, please. You got to get with the program. In Jesus' mighty name. You got to get with it. Now I have to stop here because time is gone. So what I would like you to know is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is needed now for this most wicked and evil day. And children of God, if you are not into it, you better get with it because you can't make it no other way. You know, oh, you know this church thing, you know. You dress and you go to church and you sing the two hymn and the doxology and bye. No, 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 no. <laughs> that won't work. You better get real with God and you better go deeper with God. You better make sure that you seek God with all your heart until you find him. It's the most beautiful thing one can have. Not just character, but the hope of making heaven. 
That's what it's all about. And you can't go to heaven defiled unless this heart is pure. You can go there. The Bible says only the pure in heart shall see God. Let's pray. Pray, pray after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know in my heart I have the label as a Christian. But Lord, I have strayed. I've gone far from you. The world is so corrupted. The world is so evil. Christians are so wicked. And Lord, it turns me off. And I'm such a backslider. I am so tired of playing the role of a hypocrite. I want to come clean because I know if I don't come clean, I can't do spiritual warfare effectively. I know if I have sin in my life, those prayers, Satan will use them to torture me because Satan sees and knows my life. He sees it. So, Lord, I repent of every sin. And because of the evil day that we live in, I must come now to that place where I must surrender all and clean up my act so I can do warfare for my family, for my church, for my community, for my city, for our leaders in government, for the place where I work. Father God, help me. I have lived a life of wasted years. And mighty God, I have given you nothing. You save me and wash me in your blood, and all I do is mess up. Have mercy upon me today, and please forgive me. I invite Jesus in my heart in a fresh way, and please help me, Lord, to please you. Let me stop grieving the Holy Spirit, and Lord, let me serve you with my whole heart. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen and amen. God richly bless you. And we love you.